Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from, oops, from the Area Agency on <laughs> Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. We are presenting today squashes brought to you from Peggy Spear at the Amon Carter Museum of American Art. This has got to be a colorful thing and I can't <laughs> wait. Peggy, take it away. You, you know what, Martha, you would think it would be and there is not one color image in what, uh, there's one color image in like the eight I'm showing you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I know, wow. I thought for sure. All right, let me, let me pull this bad boy up. Okay, pull it up. Squash. There we go. You know, it's our squash that you eat. Huh? Okay, so it should be squashes and gourds. We're kind of expanding the Boy. squash gourd situation. Artful moment, squash. All right. Here's a sweet <laughs> photograph you by me. Elliot Porter's <laughs> wife, Aileen, of their fit of their fourth son. They have five sons, and this is their fourth. Oh my God. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> I just thought it was so sweet because I feel like probably so many of us, whether you are in the picture or you took pictures of your children, have pictures like this. Yeah. Um, a bitty on your front porch with the pumpkins from the holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So there's not much to say about it. Just um, this, there, because we have the archives, we have some of their personal photographs as well. And so this is part of the collection um, of just some of their personal photographs. And his wife was an artist um, as well. Not that I think she was more photography, but they supported each other in their artistic endeavors. So this is there's it's a very beautiful picture, but it's a very um, relatable picture as well. Yes. Any mm -hmm. thoughts or comments on this one? There's not much art history related to it, but just a cute picture. It is a cute picture. Yeah. It's interesting. Paulette, did you take pictures of your kids out on the front porch like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one time. <laughs> Back when you had to pay for uh, flash bulbs, everybody took pictures outdoors because it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. so yeah. If you wanted to take a family picture, sure. everybody out to the yard. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting too, that's, um, it just made me think when you said that during the pandemic, like in the very beginning when people didn't know what the heck was going on, a lot of portrait photographers took pictures of people on their front porch. That was like a big thing that a surge of portrait photography went um, because people were home and kind of together with their family, maybe more than they've ever been. So a lot of photographers would go from house to house and have their the family sitting on their front porch and take a picture. And then, you know, that was their family portrait for the year. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, so this is pre-pandemic times. <laughs> All right, this is like the only color picture, but we've got so many Gentlings up right now. We can't, we can't ignore the Gentlings. No. So this is Stuart painting, not um, Scott. Scott was the, the painter that we are most familiar with. But in the um, mid 60s, Stuart decided he wanted to make art his profession as well. So he went to his brother for lessons and to learn how to um, perfect painting. And so, and Scott said, please, you know, come up with your own style. Don't copy my style, as two siblings would say. And so um, this <coughs> is a still life that Stuart painted and um, his, his style sorted to flesh out that he would do very tight up still lives where you don't really see the horizon line, um, just a very focused center. So here we've got some pumpkins. Very good. It looks, it looks like a, a photograph. It it does, does. Uh, yeah. What aspects look very phot photographic to you, Yetta? I mean, just it, it's so clear. It just doesn't look like a water uh, watercolors. Yeah. Uh, even even when I open it up, you know, it, it or, or make it bigger or larger, it just looks amazing. <laughs> very yeah. detailed. Very yeah, detailed. it's very, very detailed. detailed. Yeah, I mean, look at yeah. all the individual pieces of grass. I mean, mm -hmm. these are not 
Yeah. Stewart too was a photographer and often we've talked about this in maybe a few past. Stewart would take pictures and then give them to Scott, his brother, who was really good at etching and his brother would then make a work on paper out of his photograph. So Stewart was probably doing a lot of that same thing where he would take a photograph and then paint from that photograph. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're picking up on that process, Yetta, where it really is very realistic okay i mean even the pumpkin colors are just amazing they are and natural yeah yeah i feel like you could see that you know on your front porch or at trader joe's mm -hmm. wherever you know yep. those pumpkins look very they don't look cartoonish or mm -mm. abstract in any way and even just the weathering on the door behind it it reminds me of a door from my childhood it's, it's blowing me away this could oh, have been a house cool. that i lived in how neat. Yeah. Hmm. Where did you yeah. live at that time? That little house was in Forest City, Arkansas, which is the middle of nowhere. I've never heard of Forest City, <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> the middle of nowhere. That's right. Was it, was it a farm? Were you on a farm, Martha? No, it was a, it was a town of about 2,000. Mm. And we thought that was big, big stuff. It was big about you know, <laughs> an hour away from Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this artwork is on view right now. Um, I don't have the dims or dimensions. I couldn't find them. Um, but, and I apologize for the reflection because I took it, a picture of it on the wall. So anyway, got to have it. If our hat to the Gentlings. Okay, this is a terrible reproduction and I apologize for that, but another black and white picture of a squash <laughs> of gourds this is actually yeah. gourd. okay. yeah. <laughs> so again there's not much i could find or this particular one i could find a surprisingly a large amount of information about um but this this um artist was a really good uh, drawer illustrator and she wrote millions of cats she illustrated millions of cats. I don't know if you know that book. I did not, but she's won a ton of um, Newbery and Caldecott awards for children. Their mm -hmm. awards for children's literature. Mm -hmm. so she wrote a, and illustrated a bunch of children's books, and that's how people knew who she was. Um, but she was very interested. She grew up in Minnesota, moved to New York, um, but was very interested in the sensual nature of natural things and so the gourds lend themselves very um well to her curiosity of an interest in the organic and natural shapes of things so you can see some of the different detailings that you know she she would also this which is really interesting speculation was it was during the 1920s she was um illustrating a lot this topic a lot of museums have different versions of her squash or flower prints throughout the country. So she, this was a topic she was very interested in. Um, but she would paint at or draw at night. And so there's um, art historians think that she, this was a night, a night still life because of the darkness. And she would have a kerosene lamp lit and she would paint. So you can see kind of the, the dark shadows that the kerosene lamp wasn't lighting, but then the brightness around. Yeah. She looks like a, a children's artist, uh, illustrator. I yeah, I mean, I she has that. a lot of detail yeah. and there's like a playfulness to it. I can almost hear da 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 Well, since it's in black and white, it also seems kind of, uh, I would say gloomy, but maybe scary in some regards. Mm -hmm. It feels mm -hmm. moody. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she um and she likes drawing more at nighttime too. So there was a lot of artwork that was being produced at this time that had this kind of nighttime moody, shadowy feel, very characteristic of this era in her career. So anyway. Any idea how long she lived? I don't have her life dates written down. No, I do not. Okay. Um, and then this, because for the 
people who love the, to know the size, which is always interesting. This is 11 by 12. So it's not a small, not a small sketch. Mm -mm, it isn't. And, and the last name, Wanda Gag. Yeah, she's American. I couldn't, I didn't oh. find where her, um, she was oh, in America. I couldn't find where her family had, if they had immigrated from anywhere. I've um, never heard that, that name as the last name. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's unusual. She, she was born in a nineteen uh, in eighteen ninety three and died in forty six. Okay. Oh, she did. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks for looking that up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, I, I noticed that her last name has an umlaut over the I don't know if that changes how you accent. What's that? Accent. Accent. Okay. Accent. Good. So I'm not a thousand percent sure how to say her name. Okay, so we're, I mean, in still lives, this is, if you're like learning how to draw in a beginning, beginner's drawing class or watercolor class, still lives like this are a very common and popular way to get into um, this type of subject matter. They have got a lot of texture, they've got different color. So here, you know, she's really focusing on the different textures, which I mean, can't you feel that bumpiness that you mm -hmm. see on board? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you can feel like that, the stiffness of some of these leaves. <laughs> Check. She captures a lot of detail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. But, okay. So here's another colorful depiction of summer squash. Ooh. I could find nothing about this particular photographer. Um, just that this, photograph was part of a portfolio that she had done and it's a, a summer squash so not much to it but I think it's really pretty you can see the the bumps on the stems yes it you it feels like there's a lot of like it's a very textural picture to me even though it feels kind of flat with the black and white you're like you said Martha you can see the bumps even those you know exactly what those little bumpies feel like on when you feel it on um, squash. I mean, you, she captures that detail so well. And then even that, you, you get a feel for that softness of the fabric it's draped on. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why she chose that fabric to go along with such a, a, a bumpy, earthy picture of uh, yeah. squash. Yeah, and you can tell, you know, the light source is coming from off the right side of the photograph. But again, just like, you know, for any drawing or painting class, for photography too, vegetables are always an interesting subject. You know, Edward Weston did photograph the um, peppers and things like that, just looking at their natural shapes and making them into an elevated art form still lives forever and ever and ever have been something where, you know, fruit and veggies are always center stage. But I feel like you don't generally think of summer squash as one of those fruits or vegetables. <clears throat> They've always been around when you didn't have other things to paint or to take exactly photos right. of. Right, and, and what better place to look than nature for inspiration? All right, so again, we're moving from one black and white to another black and white. This is, for, I like this photographer, John Albach. We've looked at photographs of his in the past of um, a little drummer boy on Christmas day and boys in bathing suits at the beach in Long Island. And so here is um, the front of a, of a bodega or a little grocery store in his neighborhood. So what types of things are you seeing? Bananas. Bananas, yep. And then those Here. squash or gourds or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even down here, there looks like there might be something squash-ish. I can't quite tell. Maybe garlic. Kind of. It does look like garlic, you're right. And then you can see the reflection of the wrought iron from the, the street. Mm -hmm. 
And so to me, I thought it was almost like a stand at first, but I, you know, you wouldn't have a glass door. It looks obviously yeah. there's glass on it because that's what's causing the reflection. So it, I guess it really is like a storefront that you might have to walk down a couple of stairs to get into. Did Are anybody grow up having like a, a little bodega grocery store type thing in their neighborhood where they would go and get their food for the day? There were many in our in our in my hometown, but I didn't mm -hmm. live close to one. Did you do you like that, Yada? Do you like a grocery store, like the American grocery store, versus what European like neighborhood well, shops? Are? Well, you know, even in Europe, the grocery stores have gotten so big that they are more like, like the supermarkets. But I did, you know, I do like the smaller ones because they still have everything, just yeah. not. 10 different kind of cornstarch or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, so this, you know, this is just another example. And Albach, um, he was actually a, a tailor by trade and took pictures um, outside of his storefront just of the people and the shops and the, the houses that are, you know, row homes and things in his neighborhood. So this is just another um, very characteristic of his work, another snippet of the life in his neighborhood um, in New York City. The, um, the reflection also looks like there are more bunches of bananas outside. Yeah, this there definitely is something happening out here. It might be a quick lunch to grab on the go, but was, these are actually on the inside. Oh, are they? Thing. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. See how perceptive I'm not. No, well, this is, it's tough looking at the image on a reproduction. I've, I've, I've been able to see it, so I know. Okay. <laughs> Up close and personal, huh? And then we had a couple, um, again, I could not find much information about this particular photograph, but Helen Post, um, I believe, worked for the government and took pictures of um, different American Indian reservations. Uh, for the government. And so here, and that she had a close relationship. Last week we looked, or last time we looked at the picture of the fire, the, um, mm -hmm. this ceremony that was happening outside and it looked almost like a beach, but there had the rock uh, high them and the big bonfire. She, this was the same photographer that was able to um, develop a, a close relationship with the Navajo particularly. I think she worked for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Um, but here's one of, it's a portrait of a man in his squash farm. Mm -hmm. So before they're pulled out. But what, do you get any sense about the, the person we, that she photographed? Any, anything you know about this person just from looking at this image? Hmm. It's, it's, it sort of looks proud. He I agree. Doesn't he? Yes. 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 Dance with his arm in the side and just takes the look over his field. Exactly. I've got that same sense. Yes. And even he's kind of smiling. I mean, not in a smug way, but in a, in a like you said, yet in a proud, happy, you know, look at what mm -hmm. I've done type of way. Mm -hmm. Kind of mm -hmm. like you'd look at your family because he's yeah. not raised from seeds. These are his babies. I mean, and he's got that, you can tell he himself is, is working the, the farm because he's got the, he kind of has some weathered hands, which, you know, being out in the sun could do that and working with your hands. And his outfit, he looks, you know, his boots, those are working clothes. Those are, he is out in the field. Mm -hmm. His hat. And then his, his beautiful braids. So I did not realize that the um, squash leaves were that big. They're beautiful. Oh yeah, they're big. It, squash blossom necklaces are are also um, popular in the Southwest yes. with uh, right. Native Americans. There were a number of images when I was looking through our database with squash that uh, American Indians wearing the squash necklaces came up with that search. Squash. And for those who might not be familiar with a squash necklace, they're often silver or silver and turquoise or silver and coral 
um, that have, it almost looks like an upside down half moon that hangs um, at the center of the, mm. uh, during rodeo season, you can't swing your purse without hitting one. They're all over. It's very um, Southwest style jewelry. Uh, squash blossoms are all are also edible. Mm -hmm. um, my, my parents uh, uh, taught, taught, taught me that, not that I tried. Do, are they, do they taste good? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Martha. You bet. Did they taste good, John? Uh, I really don't know. Uh, maybe <laughs> if they fried them, I would have liked them. That's sure. right. <laughs> Anything in butter is good. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, I think we have one more another man in his field. Although this is a very different vibe than the other one. He's, he's standing in the back. Mm -hmm. Does it look like yeah. he's wearing his working clothes, his farm clothing? No. 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 And this is, it looks like, yeah, it is pumpkin. Pumpkins. But you can see him, he has a pumpkin standing up directly in front of him. So I get the sense. Now, what is the purpose of having that pumpkin in front of him? Does anyone have a guess? Maybe it's the biggest one in the in the bunch. It, yeah, I mean, it, it, I think you're alluding to its scale. Like, look how big my mm -hmm. pumpkins are, gang. Because mm -hmm. look how massive some of these are. So it's a little bit like the other farmer, where there's a sense of pride in, like, oh, look at my look at my patch. On the far. On the far left, there's a, a, a 55 gallon drum, and there oh, is yeah. large next to that. If Man, you know how big a drum is. Yeah. Good eye. So there's not much I could find about this photograph, except that this company, Ravnos, was based, I think, out of California, although in our um, database, it says Denver, so I think it might have retailed in Denver as well, or printed in Denver. But these were basically stock photographs. This company would take pictures of everyday things um, that would then be sold for stock, postcards, stuff like that. So it has that postcard feel to it from that time era. Do you, do you get that sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely a postcard feel. Also, because it says where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, California. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So this is California, um, and the these photographs would sell in a kiosk, like in a little storefront, only during the summer was typically when the the shop was open for these photographs to sell. Interestingly enough. So these could be, mo and it was often of people in that general area. Um, the photographers would photograph the community and use those pictures to then use for stock photo. So kind of an interesting smattering, not much art historical information, but as we can see, there's been a, a long and large history of pumpkin squash and gourds being mm -hmm. inspiration for artists. I, I, uh, I read an article right before thanks uh, for Halloween that 40% of all squashes in America or come from Illinois. You know, that's really? Oh. From that state. Mm -hmm. oh, how interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're seeing squash grow. Okay, so this is California. This is, you know, where a Navajo res reservation would be. So in like, you know, Southwest America, New York, and we're not seeing it grow there. But then um, here too, it's in Illinois. So pumpkins, Pumpkins hit, reach everywhere in America, mm -hmm. New York. So anyway, all right. So those are our hopefully putting you in, um, getting you inspiration for a beautiful tablescape for your That's Thanksgiving crazy. meal next week, <laughs> um, which I cannot believe it's Thanksgiving next week. I will not be here. I'm actually flying up uh, north to see my family for Thanksgiving, but we will be back December 1st and the theme will be doors. So, gonna be doors, doors like front doors. Oh, oh they're yeah. so pretty. Lots of inspiration. Oh, they're so pretty. Nice yeah. stores, yeah. yeah. Maybe a Georgia O'Keeffe door and all of that. Did you look at my powerpoints? No. <laughs> <laughs>
No. We've, got, we've got a couple of Georgia O'Keeffe's in there. Okay. But yeah, so we will be back with um, Doors in December, and I hope all of you have a very wonderful Thanksgiving, whether you're staying local or traveling. I hope you have a nice uh, holiday week. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, thank friends. You. See you soon. Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. Yeah. Did you send a list this morning of? The no, I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's been okay. kind of a hectic week. I think that's all right. We're out of town next week. So we're like, so you will get it tomorrow. Thank you. Have You're a welcome. wonderful day. You too. Bye y'all. Bye. 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 Dusty, you sneaked in on us. Would you mute? Been here all time. He has? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Dusty, you're on mute. So we can't hear you yet. Oh, you you can't hear me? No, no, oh, we you can hear, Nancy. Can hear you. Can hear me. There's Dusty. Yeah, we can hear. Yeah, we can no, hear, we you, can Nancy. hear you. Okay. I got to out in the middle. Well, good, good. I hope you're a squash lover. I am. Oh yeah. Right. I, I love. I, I I love that squash particularly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Myra and I grew, grew squash in our garden for a long time, and mm -hmm. uh, squash and zucchini, and mm -hmm. uh, even she got me to start uh, eating it. Uh, wow! So, I really I, I ate it because we had so much I didn't want to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Myra, I'd love to know how you had to cook it. <laughs> I probably uh, steamed it. Mm -hmm. breaded it and steamed it made it soft and uh spiced it up yeah you could almost make pie out of that yes <laughs> uh, so while we're waiting for Kristen to reappear let's take a look at what's coming up tomorrow okay what is why, why not we'll just take a look can anybody see purple it's yeah, coming I guess. Up, it's coming up, it's coming up. There it is. Okay. Tomorrow is Moving to Heal with Emily Corbin. And moving Gail, to Heal. <laughs> Gail will be your uh, host for tomorrow because it's my ladies' luncheon day. Oh. And then I'll be back on Friday with Sentimental Journey. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah. Well, let me go ahead and turn off the recording. And we'll start Fifth Street Cafe.